speech samples. Such as this. Rewriting, recreating the same old programs over and over and over, all over the world. So, Final destination. All right, all right, all right. So I'm seeing that we got quite a few people here. I, I think everybody's pretty excited to uh, look over all this stuff here. So let's get this moving. Uh, so thank you guys for coming out. This is our special Q&A on HMNY, Helios, and Matheson. Uh, they are the 92% owners of MoviePass, which I'm sure that's, that's basically the basic information that most people know here is that this Helios and Matheson decided to buy out this company called MoviePass, which has been kind of this up and coming interesting thing, uh, kind of a Netflix-esque company that uh, sells the subscription service for movie theaters, which sounds interesting on paper, but we're really gonna kind of dive into it a little bit more and give you some more information on why uh, stock that is pertaining to MoviePass uh, looks like this. So this is, this is where we really start off here. So this is the chart, uh, daily chart for HMNY, Helios and Matheson Analytics. Uh, as you can see, we had that huge, huge pop in September of 2017. And from there, we went from a nice $38.85 to where we are currently, which is an after hours today, 30 cents. Now, Doing the math there, that's a drop of over 99%. Uh, I'm sure you guys are probably wondering what the hell happened here with this stock. And uh, we're going to go over it. We're going to kind of co go over a little bit of the time frame, um, what kind of happened today especially with this stock, and then also uh, what to expect for the future. And any questions that you guys have today, make sure you guys are posting it in the chat. Uh, make sure you guys are you know signing into your YouTubes or sign into your Gmail account. Get on that chat that we have rolling there. We got some moderators that are gonna look through the comments and we're gonna take questions and try to answer them to the best of our ability so you guys know what the hell is going on with this thing. Alrighty. So to start off, Helios and Matheson wasn't always into movie pass. Before this huge spike, we gotta look back at the history of this thing just a little bit further. Uh, let's pull out the entire chart. Uh, we had this run up years ago uh, that was when they were trying to buy up a different company failed uh, and then we had this run up in 2014 then in 2015 a subsequent run up until the dilution now we're looking from you know a two dollar perspective this thing jumped to about uh, nine dollars uh, and it was they, because they bought this application for radar services nobody really understood what that meant at the time but they thought that it was going to be an innovative technology they used it to dilute the stock to hell and you know, just play it for a big money grab until they brought the stock back down to the same point, and then they said, "Hey, you know, we're we're gonna do a partnership deal with this thing." 
And then suddenly they stopped talking about that idea entirely once they got the stock back down to about a dollar and then started talking about this movie pass thing. Suddenly they bought a big uh, amount in movie pass. And that really uh, blew this thing up. You can see we had some explosive action, especially recently, uh, when you're looking at a weekly chart here. So, what's the deal with Movie Pass? If you guys aren't aware of it, uh, and you guys are watching this video, uh, just to give you a quick rundown. It is a subscription service for movie theaters. You get to go to a movie three times a month for, I believe it's $8.99, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it could be $7.99. I can't remember what their promotion is currently. Uh, but you get a little card, and they basically reimburse you for going to the movie theaters. Uh, nothing super special about it. There are competitive services out there that are doing the same things. But people really latched onto the idea of a stock that is trading at a very low amount uh, with not a large float on the stock itself. Uh, the, the float on this is currently huge now after the dilution but at the time was uh pretty relatively small and it just blew up basically overnight i think it was over about a week or so that this thing just kind of ran with it and ran from uh you know two dollars to 38 dollars, and people were super excited about this thing they thought wow this is going to be the next netflix this is going to be a gold mine you know movie theaters are dying but this is going to bring them back this is going to bring families back together and boy, were we surprised when we found out that Helios and Matheson had done this because we were playing this thing back in 2015 and knew exactly what they were doing. So we played the run up initially, and then you expect to come down. All right, yeah, it's going to pull back. I mean, it went from $2 to 39 bucks, But uh, people thought that overall this was going to go back up. Now, what happened was in January, uh, they signed a lot of notes out um, – which are options essentially to be able to buy stock at a certain price. Uh, this is where the toxic dilution really started to churn with this stock. They've been diluting this stock bit by bit uh, just to pump this thing full of, uh, you know, or pump out as much money as they can out of this, uh, you know, opportunity that they received of it booming 20 times. So they used every opportunity they could to get as much money they can out of this stock at the expense of the shareholders. Meanwhile, smiling and saying, hey, we need to do this for operations cost. Really, a lot of it was going to overhead and management, but they didn't really want to tell you that, and they didn't really think that you guys are going to read the filings. Um, the latest that they did, I think you guys remember, if you guys were in this, uh, in the let's, let's, let's zoom in a little bit more and make it a little bit more legible. Uh, we'll go to the 180 day chart because I don't have a better uh, better one here. But if you see here, uh, we had this stock around the 260 range. They pumped it up to about 470 or so. And then after that, I believe the day after, they dropped the news of an at the market offering. Now, if you guys aren't aware of what an at the market offering is, basically they're saying we're going to sell up to X amount of dollars a stock, no matter what the price is. Now that's good and dandy if you have a lot of buyers that can keep the support up, but you know if you're selling one million dollars worth of stock at four dollars, you're selling two hundred fifty thousand shares. Well, what happens when you get down to forty cents is when you're selling that one million dollars worth of sh uh, stock, you're selling way more shares at forty cents than you were at four dollars. Now that really comes into play of how this unravels here. Uh, so the initial dilution begins, continues, continues dumping and dumping. And every time the price gets lower, they're dumping the same amount of money each day, but they're dumping more shares. And the reason they're allowed to do this is because they have an authorized share limit of 500 million shares. Now, they prepped the stock to do this. Uh, they grasped onto this idea. They bought up as much movie pass as they could because they realized it was a real grabber, a real cult stock. And then after that, they started this dilution machine to basically pump out as many shares as they could. And that brought the stock from uh, this $4 plus that we saw down to about 34 cents where we saw it today before the little jump up that people got excited about Netflix news, Verizon news, what have you. I was hearing all kinds of rumors today and that's what really got it to pop. Um, we did play it because it was a bottom off the 34 cent range, and we did play it until 40 cents today, just full disclosure in our group. But 
what they did is they took some of that money, sent it out, paid some people to shill this thing, put some rumors out on stock twits to get this thing rolling before they could pull the news of, hey, we're going to have this shareholder meeting. Now, let's talk about this shareholder meeting just so you guys all are on the same page here. So they have a few points they'd like to make in this shareholder meeting. One, they want to increase the authorized share count from 50 million to 2 billion shares. Now, they want to quadruple the amount of shares they're allowed to put out. The reason they want to do this is because they can continue the, the dilution machine from here. Now, if you're talking the stock's at 30 cents, imagine if the float was four times bigger. So we're talking, you know, seven and a half cents rather than 30 cents. Uh, so that's one thing that they, they're allowed to do it. I mean, as long as they can get the voters to vote for it, then that is no problem at all. And that's uh, one big thing that they do here is they get these companies to buy up uh, these massive notes and stuff that they can cash in for massive amounts of share power so they can get these things approved. Now, the second thing they wanted to want to approve in this special shareholder meeting is the ability to do a reverse split of one to two to one to 250. Quite a range there, uh, quite a range indeed. I mean, we're talking one to two, which is just you know a reverse split two to one basically, uh, or one to 250, which is huge, huge. So the reason that they want this kind of range is because when they dilute this thing down to basically nothing, and put out almost 2 billion shares, they need to really tighten that up again. And the reason they need to do that is so they can get this to a legible number again, so they can get more people to buy in, think that the price jumped, oh, they're starting to do well again, and start the dilution churn all over again with new notes and new toxic dilution. This is not a new concept, boys and girls. This is something that gets done in the penny stock market over and over again. Uh, you can look at some tickers like, uh, Free Seas, for example, or Great Basin. Those are two notorious ones. Jivo is also notorious for some toxic financing. Right now, it doesn't seem like it because of their huge jump, but trust me, that thing is dilutive. Um, absolutely toxic dilution. And uh, the third thing that I really want to point out that they're talking about for this shareholder meeting uh, isn't just the authorized shares, isn't just the reverse split, but uh, to approve the adjournment of special meeting, if necessary, to continue to solicit votes on the above proposals if uh, sufficient votes to pass aren't achieved in time for the meeting. So basically, they can keep delaying the meeting over and over until they get the votes they need for these two proposals to keep the dilution machine going. Now. I know we're throwing a lot of shade on it really fast. You guys are saying, what the hell? What about the movie pass thing, right? You guys got to realize this movie pass thing, as cool of an idea as it is, is really just a temporary front. Like those guys sold off most of the company to Helios and Matheson to get out of the thing because it wasn't working. They're spending $45 per sub and they're charging $8. That's not a very competitive business model. And they really, you know, they're getting subscribers. Don't get me wrong. I think they're at 3.5 million subscribers now, but that's not a huge amount in today's world. It sounds great in 2002. It doesn't sound great in the year 2018 when you can have somebody on Twitter get more followers than that, when you can have somebody on YouTube get more followers than that. When you're talking about 100, 200 million people usually will subscribe to things now. Like people are very internet oriented now and these internet services and subscription services get massive amounts of subscribers. Even smaller ones get massive amounts of subscribers versus a paltry three and a half million. They try to play it like it's a big number. It really isn't as big as it sounds. So considering the fact that they're losing, you know, about 30 plus dollars per, per sub every time that they're increasing their sub count they're actually losing more money and they have to pull some of that money from somewhere and that's going to come from the shareholders this is why they one reason why they need to do these kind of diluted measures is to try to keep the operation costs uh, you know try to get money for these operation costs flowing uh, the other reason is obviously for management to get paid out on this thing so don't be surprised if you see this continue to fall downward, number one, 
And number two, don't be surprised when you see the reverse split. Don't be surprised if they delay the shareholder meeting to continue to try to get the votes until they get approved. Uh, it's going to be that kind of battle for HMNY, Helios, and Matheson to continue to try to do that until they can prop the price back up and continue the dilution machine down. Uh, now, let's zoom in a little bit more. I had some people asking about, well, how did you know what was going on today with this thing? So people saw that suddenly we had this boom of volume at the end of the day, and people were talking rumors, 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 talking Netflix deals, Verizon deals, some kind of partnerships. I don't know. There was rumors flying everywhere. Like I said earlier, those are shills. Those were planted. Uh, can't really prove it, but this is something that is done by uh, investor relation companies, also known as IR companies. They usually do these for biotech stocks, and they usually do them for multi-month runs. They throw out... Uh, kind of believable press releases over time. I think I might have some examples for you. Um, let me see here. I'd have to dig through my bookmarks, but I do have some examples somewhere. So let me see if I can find some. But there are there, there are these IR companies. They sound completely legitimate, but when you look at the stocks that they are promoting, you'll see how many of them are actual trash because you'll see that they went through three or six months of this huge pump from a dollar to five dollars and then crash back down in a month because they didn't actually have anything real it was just investor relation pr garbage pushing the stock up and that's what we play with in this this micro cap market uh is this kind of shady game that doesn't really get stopped because you're supposed to do your dd right so as far as this this timely uh pop came together right at the end of the day massive volume started coming in uh you know shares were pouring in everybody thought that something was going to happen after hours that was so great now typically something like this if there was leaked news it would start one or two hours before not 15 minutes before that's one big indication that something's kind of off uh, when you have this huge dilution of four dollars down to 30 cents then suddenly there's a big pop 25 percent pop comes out of nowhere and then you hear nothing. You know, normally you'd hear something, some whisperings, some actual press release come out, at least to give it some validity to the move. There was nothing here. It was just straight buys out of nowhere, and things started flying. And we know that a lot of people are just bag holders here, so where are all the buys coming from? They're artificial buys. So the reason that they do this is to get the last round of bag holders stuck before they continue the dilution here. So... They still have more dilution to go. They still haven't closed their current at-the-market offering. They have the January notes that they still need to liquidate, which uh, I believe is about $25 million worth as well. And now they're opening up the float uh, or the authorized share count uh, four times and trying to get that uh, reverse split authorized. So that's what caused this huge drop from $0.50 cents down to $0.27. Cents. Cracking our uh, previous low, which was 33.29 cents, I believe. Um, we were pretty close here as well, 33.64. And that's what that area really needed to hold for any kind of uh, continuation of the upside. Uh, so that's kind of where the situation is right now in a rundown, like a quick 15-minute rundown here for you guys, for you guys to understand a little more, a bit more about how these dilutive companies – drag somebody in and then trash their accounts just so they can play this game and the more of you that jump in the more fodder that they have to continue this scheme until they go into otc markets and kind of fade away uh, another example like i said gbsn let's see if they're running under their official ticker name now it might not be let's see here it looks like they're running under GBSNQ now. Uh, they're doing a they're doing a whole different scheme here, so this is not a great chart to use. But here we go. Here's GBSN. You'll see. Uh, <laughs> this is not even. This is from 2015 to 2018. Uh, Thirty-four thousand down to zero 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 seven cents. Uh, it's showing eleven cents, but they're they moved over to another ticker temporarily. They do pumps like these, like from here, it was $474 adjusted by reverse splits to $2,600. So that was a good run. It was about five times, and you can see where it ended up. 
I mean, $2,600 to 0 0.0007 tells you how much dilution actually ran into this. If I had more time to pull up the more specific charts here, I could actually show you very similar patterns uh, that just happened to HMNY. Very, very similar ideas of dilution. Um, I would definitely look into a stock like this, just look at the chart history, look into the filings that they released in uh, 2016 especially, and you'll see very similar notions if you look at filings versus HMNY, for example. Um, well, let's come back here. So basically what I'm trying to say here, this is not a ideal situation for somebody that wants to be in an interesting company like MoviePass. You basically have this good company that has a chance if it was under the right management, MoviePass. I mean, they're doing well with their subs and everything, but they have this underwriter, HMNY, who owns the company now, who has nothing but ill intentions to the shareholders of this company. So they're just using this HMNY as kind of a shell here. And that's, that's the big problem is people like the idea of MoviePass and people want to grab onto it. And they think, hey, at one point it was $38. Now it's down so hard because they have to do this financing to keep it alive. They're, they're bleeding $20 million a week. You know, this might be a short term thing, but in the long term, they're going to hit something big and they're going to go huge. It's a very, very nice thought and it's very comforting to think about when you're trying to bag hold. But the reality of the situation is they're opening this up for another year of dilution uh, just ahead here. And I think people early on are realizing that. And I'm seeing a question right here. What are SEC doing about this? Probably close to nothing. They might have an investigation on their table, but that doesn't mean it's opened up. That doesn't mean that anybody's doing anything about it currently. Um, hopefully somebody will get on this company and arrest these guys for this because it's not just the company themselves. It's also the underwriters who take on the notes. For example, in uh, January, uh, we have Hudson Bay and CVI Investments. Those are the two companies that underwrote uh, several companies like GBSN and ETRM, uh, which is now RLS. Her SLS, uh, you'll see that those were also uh, our SLS was also a major diluter. So you have these underwriters that go to multiple companies and do this pump and dump kind of scheme over time uh, to basically raise money for themselves. Now I see where am I getting forty five dollars per sub? If they continue to dilute the shares, can we refuse to buy and let this company just die to the hell? I don't know how that's spelled out. An SEC filing show proof that management is robbing shareholders. Who can I complain to at SEC? Can I use you as reference? Um, okay, so I guess people want to start to go through filings. All right, let's do it. So essentially, there was one filing that I wanted to bring up in particular first. Let me pull it up here. I think it's really important that people are asking, where are we getting this uh, information? And where are these filings? Right. So let's pull up the January prospectus here first. And it might seem like pretty, uh, pretty scary here. But you'll see uh, $400 million common stock, preferred stock, warrants, units. Um, this is at the January prospectus here. And this is when the stock was at $9.15 a share. And I believe if we look through here, CVI, it's not coming up actually, because they had quite a few. So this one wasn't for CVI. This is the January prospectus. Let me see here. We had a few filings pulled up. Here we go. This is the the January notes here for sixty million. Um, let's see here. So it was for thirty five thousand thirty five million uh, cash. I believe. Let me see. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure that I get this accurate here. 
cash payment in the aggregate of 25 million and then a uh, secure promissory note in the aggregate amount of 35 million. Let's find out who was getting these. I don't think it'll show in this one. And that's the problem. And not everything um, gets put together as simply as that. And we kind of just did this last minute, so I don't have all of the research in front of me. Uh, but the story is what it is. So we see that uh, Palladium Capital Investors are uh, the underwriters for this. 174,000 shares of common stock, exercise price of 11.44, and we have that 35 million dollar note there that hasn't been um, used up yet. Next up, hold on here. I just got to get to the filing website. I like the bashers here. You get a better perspective on stock twits than this tyke. Yeah. I wasn't going to say the whole thing was going to be entertaining. This The initial part of the video was the more entertaining part to listen to some real truth about this stock. I mean, there's got there's the reason why it's dropping from $38 to 30 cents. This isn't the first time that this has happened. So we're looking here, the amendment that they're talking about. We've already gone over this one. Uh, where was the at the market offering? And what is the current market cap at? Let's see here. When they bought pretty large amount, I think they're at fifty-seven percent according to this one here. So they're at about fifty million market cap, and the offering that they did for at the market was for a hundred and fifty million. So they diluted pretty large to get their market cap down to fifty million here. Number one. Skip is in timeout. That's nice. Okay. Sorry, getting a little off track here. So to find the proof in the SEC filings, Carlos asks, um, the proof is in the fact that they are doing these offerings in the first place and they have filings, which is a completely legal thing. It's not something that they're doing completely illegally. It's, there's other activities that happen behind the scenes that are illegal. If they're paying people off to kind of, you know, do insider trading for the company, in essence, um, in order to use sh shell companies, things like that, that's where a uh, company can get in trouble. But these people that do these kinds of things are professionals. It's not their first company. It's not their first rodeo. Hudson Bay and CVI, for example, they've been doing it to several companies in the past, and they've done it without getting so you know caught that they went to jail I think they've gotten fined before um, don't quote me on that but this is something that is a practice and it's not an uncommon one with micro cap stocks uh, this is the kind of chart patterns that we would see with these kinds of diluted toxic measures and it's something that uh, you know you're not gonna be able to just say hey SEC they robbed me. Well, did you read the filings? No. Okay, well, you didn't do your DD. Um, let's see here. How can a company recover ever like NBCN at 1 billion shares? And we know if they RS, they will just get shorted to hell back down. INPX was 30 cents and they RS to like $5. Now it's 30 cents again. Uh, they keep RSing or reverse splitting until they finally hit a point where they actually either A, legitimately have the money to continue running the company normally. And that's something that kind of seems to start happening uh, with you know companies like 
Dry's leveled out. I don't know if they're actually doing well. I haven't looked into them recently, but they actually leveled out recently, which could be indicative of either A, they got an IR company that's shilling it, or B, maybe they actually started caring about the company, started putting some money into it. Maybe they finally got all the money that they needed after the whole Greece incident. Uh, that's a macroeconomic event, and that's a totally different story. I'm not saying go buy Dry's, but I just don't know enough to know why this thing stopped dropping. Uh, I mean, drop from me 168,000 reverse split adjusted. So maybe it'll go up one day. I'm sure people would like to believe that. Uh, let's see here. Hello, Andrew. For a bag holder, would getting out at the jump after the RS be their best bet, or should they cut losses now? Personally, I would think that you got the news that they're planning on continued dilution. Right now, uh, here is probably a decent time to cut losses. I'm seeing this going down, potentially down to 20 cents. Uh, considering this news, uh, it's going to all depend on if they still, if they close that offering or not. Uh, that previous offering, the at the, at the market offering. If that gets closed, that might hold the price up just enough for now to keep it around 30 cents. But it's such a risky play. I mean, there's so many other stocks to play out there. Why try to set your money on fire here? Um, once they get that shareholder vote to approve uh, authorized share count and the reverse split, that's when you're really going to start to see some action to tank towards the, the bad side. And then you'd want to wait until after the reverse split to play a possible pump on it. But I would not wait inside before the RS just to try to play the pump post reverse split because sometimes they drop 60%, sometimes they pump 60% after the reverse split. Uh, so definitely I would rather cut now than, uh, than stay in and get hit by that storm. What will be the price after reverse split? Well, they're gonna wanna keep it above a dollar. We know that much because they need to keep, uh, they need to try to stay above the NASDAQ minimum. Uh, that being said, I don't see them doing necessarily a 250 to one RS. That's, that's pretty large, but it's very possible that they could to try to bring the stock price back up into the $20 range. Uh, consider it, you know, if this reached down to like five cents or so, I think the 250 uh, would bring that to 1250. So five to 10 cent range would bring it to uh, between 1250 and $25. If they drop lower than that, then they would definitely use the 250 to stay within a decent dollar range to continue the dilution. Uh, but once that they approve uh, to go to 2 billion shares from 500 million, there's really not much that uh, you're going to be able to do with this. Now, the $45 per sub number, I'm trying to find that information. I had it somewhere here, but I'm missing it. And I'm going to rescind that statement in that case because I can't find the information. So I'm going to rescind it for now. Um, I'll probably think I'm going to post some literature that I'll find. Um, so that way we can get some more information out to you guys. Because I know I've, I've seen that number come up um, in a report here. But I just don't have that information in front of me here. Somebody's asking, is there any potential upside here? Uh, I think the biggest potential upside is that if MoviePass gets sold off from HMNY, which I don't know if HMNY is interested in selling them at this time because they're using them as kind of a piggyback um, to kind of use that company to dilute the stock terribly. It's not a good situation for people who are interested in MoviePass. Essentially, it's, this was a hostile takeover of the company uh, by a very, very bad actor, a bad group of actors. And if, you're, if you like the idea of MoviePass, unfortunately, as of right now, that dream is going to be very hard for that company to achieve under this direction and this management uh, because it's going to be completely mismanaged and used for a completely different purpose than what the idea of MoviePass was for. So, 
that, that's that's the part that kind of sucks. I mean, I think Movie Pass was an interesting idea, and I think under the original leadership seemed like it was a growing business. And don't get me wrong, you'll probably still see the sub count go up for now. They're still going to try to keep the the business aspect of it alive enough that people want to keep investing and uh, bag holding this company. But at the end of the day, this is not their ultimate intention to keep the company running uh, for Movie Pass. It's to dilute the stock to be able to get as much money out of this idea as possible. Uh, let's see here. I thought there was an open bar being offered here. Unfortunately, no. So there was large volume that moved the price up pre-close and then low volume that brought the, brought the price down in after hours. What happens tomorrow morning if they have large volume thoughts? All right, that's a good question. So, and I don't think it was necessarily low volume in after hours. I think relative, you had three candles here, 1.2 million, 3.8 million, and 6.3 million. So you have about roughly, what, 11 million or so, 10, 11 million. And then after that, uh, a few more candles equaling out to about 15 million shares before we got news. And relative looks like about five, six million. I'm just rough guesstimating here. Uh, so you don't have all of the shares that were bought up, dropped off yet. Now that's because some people who bought during this, not selling during this, they think that the balance is gonna come. They're pissed that they're gonna sell at a price that they just bought it, you know, right before close at in the forties and they're thinking why would i sell it now during an after hours when it could just bounce the next day i think if you see this continue to have downside stay under 30 cents first of all and continue to have downside that's when you're going to see the the it's going to start unraveling and you're going to see more people dropping out because we've created new lows now okay a new low of 27 cents after that low of 33 cents uh it's basic instinct now that more people are going to be hotter on the sell trigger except for the most coveted and most righteous of bag holders that believe that this thing is going to the moon and probably are bashing me in the comments here. Um, let's see here. Joe John, what about HMNY's acquisition of production companies? Didn't they just buy Oasis Films? I thought they wanted to rebrand as Movie Pass Films and start screening their own productions. Okay, so... Let's see here. Oasis Films. Let's just take a look. Oasis Films, privately held company. They've done a few movies that were interesting. Nothing crazy. They did the Gotti movie, which wasn't a big seller, as we saw. I'm having a problem seeing that there's any really big movies that came out. Seems like they made a decent number of movies, and it's very possible that they're going to use this to try to do something similar to Netflix. Hey, we're going to do our own. Oh, that's, that's the wrong Oasis. That's not coming up with the... Uh, I love it. So these people, they keep bringing up, okay, so more than 80 films, which have grossed in excess of $1 billion. Box office, ticket sales worldwide, average of roughly 13 million per film. Okay, that's a great number. Do you have the production cost numbers of all of those films, uh, promotional cost numbers of all of those films? And then do you know in what years were their biggest years of making that money? Have they been doing well recently? Why'd they sell the company? Um, I don't have that information offhand, but you have that uh, there, Cabbage Soup. Do you have the rest of the information? Be nice to know. Thoughts on NVCN? Well, 
I don't have any thoughts on NBCN at the moment. We're doing an HMNY stream, but I will assume that NBCN is probably not doing too great considering they're down to a couple of pennies, I believe. How do I explain that there are still quite a lot institutional investors and hedge funds buying into this and increasing their exposure? Uh, what hedge funds have been buying this recently? I'm not aware of any recent hedge fund buys or insider buys. I know that we have the people who have the dilutive notes um, who are pretty large holders because they need that for the votes, but uh, I don't think that we've had many recent hedge buys, um, at least not in the levels under $5 because hedge funds typically don't buy into stocks under $5. They have uh, rules, in-house rules about that. Hey, I appreciate your warning, but no proof that HMNY has the same motivation as shysters. You make accusations without evidence. I'm wary of HMNY myself, but would love to hear proof. There we go. CVI and Hudson Bay, IR firms, boiler rooms. Citadel's another one. That was brought up there. Citadel was probably an, a hedge fund that was brought up earlier. And shyster is a nice word. So I, I'm getting thrown out, uh, thrown into the, the wind here that, hey, I'm not following this as much as you guys are. You're absolutely right. I'm not following the day-to-day -day of HMNY like you guys are. I only believe in one real thing, which is the chart. The chart is telling us what's happening. It's obvious what has occurred here. Uh, if you don't believe in the chart action, which is what your money is based against, not based against their story that they're telling you, then I don't know why you're in stocks at all. If you're, if you're basing it on their story, then you're really screwing up. This is, this is for people who are actually interested in the stock market itself, really. I mean, this is supposed to be a warning for you guys to actually look into this a little bit more. Hey, you know, these guys are not doing things perfectly. I mean, it's great that they get their sub counts up. It's great that they're doing the idea of movie pass is great itself, but you got this this HMNY monster behind it, and that's the problem. I'm just trying to bring awareness to that. You guys look into it a little bit more as well, uh, because stocks don't go from thirty eight dollars to thirty cents in months. It just doesn't happen with a normal stock. Show me one even semi-decent company that does $38 to $0.30, cents, and I'll show you 10 toxic dilutive companies that do that. Actually, probably show you more than 10 because there's not very many companies that ever go you know, down 99% in a matter of about nine months. Here, yeah, here is a good example, actually, uh, of a normal company that went down pretty badly. Uh, they went from $8 to about $1.64, and they did that over about two years. Company wasn't doing well, uh, but it wasn't due to toxic dilutive practices. They didn't drop 99% in nine months. It was more of a relative drop to, the, to their market share until they boomed up like that. And they're booming because of a very interesting macroeconomic event that's a completely different situation. I mean, to say $38 to $0.38, cents, you should at least say $2 to $38 to $0.38. Cents. Very true. So if you do look at HMNY before the boom, it was at about actually close to $3 before they boomed. And post-reverse split, it was a low, uh, low float there that was brought up there. And yeah, here was higher than eight, but I was just trying to make the point that we're looking at nine months versus a few years.
HMNY buying movie pass is the same as MYSZ buying a big booth at CES. You pump your stock to dilute, pay yourself. That's how this works. Couldn't have said it better myself, Thomas. That is exactly how this works, and it's been going on for years. Uh, the only reason I know this is because I was in past companies like this. I actually was a bag holder for GBSN for quite a while. Um, that was my one of my first mistakes, and I learned about these companies that do these things. I didn't believe it at first, and I hated all the people like me, what I'm doing right now, who said, hey, you got to open your eyes a little bit and look at what the company itself is doing rather than what news you're getting from the company itself. You have to look at how they're diluting the stock. Don't they have someone on from Netflix and management? Couldn't they put out stuff to pump the price up so their diluted shares are at a higher price? Yes, they would have that ability. I don't know if they have somebody from Netflix in their management personally. Uh, but yes, they would have the ability to use certain PRs to try to pump their stock up. They used rumors in this case to pump it up to you know 45 cents before this news to try to keep the stock price up enough uh, so they can continue to dump shares because they haven't closed their at-the-market offering. They still have to dump more shares, um, and I don't know when that's going to end. I thought that that was going to be actually the news today, but it unfortunately didn't occur for this company, and we see the continued dilution uh, going to occur until we get that close of that offering. I bought into HMNY cause movie pass. I gather that you recommend not to buy any more even to average down my cost. Uh, no, because you wanted to buy into movie pass and you're actually buying into HMNY. You're not buying into uh, movie pass. You're buying into the idea of movie pass, but you're really buying into the management of HMNY and that's the problem here. That's really what I'm trying to get across is that you have two sides of the story here. You have the nice side of movie pass and these subs and these great numbers and this growth and the idea of partnerships and disruption with movie theater subscriptions and that sounds great and then on the other side you actually have the people who are now running the show and took it over um, slowly but surely took up the 92 percent to take over the company um, that are using it for an ulterior motive um, and preying on the people that like the idea of movie pass to profit for themselves and that's the problem so even if you average down your cost you're still not going to be in a great position uh, recommend honestly cutting and running um, and I can't really say that 100% because you might miss a pump and then I'll feel bad but overall if you're thinking about holding it in a longer term you're only going to get burned in this situation we've seen it time and time again that's why we're putting out this warning here for you Let's see here. Yeah, Mitch Lowe, the CEO of MoviePass, was a co-founder of Netflix. I think you bring up great points about the charting with the dilution being the biggest concern. I'm just curious what data MoviePass can gather for targeted marketing value like Mitch claims. They can get a lot from their application um, in location data, shopping data, things like that. Hey, where did this person go before they went to the theater? Where did they go after? What did they watch? That's actually pretty valuable data because it's real world, world tracking data. It's something that made Niantic pretty big with Pokemon Go because they had the ability to use that tracking data to sell, see where kids wanted to go, even though it was a little bit biased because of the game. Um, that data is actually pretty valuable. Don't get me wrong. Uh, and that is a tool in the arsenal of MoviePass itself. Uh, like I said, I'm not really hating on the business model itself of MoviePass, even though you know, they're cash-strapped and you know, it's a really tough time for them overall. But the problem is they have this big leech called HMNY, Helios and Matheson, running the show now. That's the real big problem. And Helios and Matheson came in, took the idea, and ran with it to dilute shares down as much as they could to profit as much as they could off the idea. Thompson Reuters daily stock report says that HMNY will go up to $12 in 12 months. Can you comment to that? Thompson Reuters daily stock report. Uh, if you're paying for those, you're paying for spam. So I hope you're not paying for that. 
Based on two analysts offering 12-month price targets for HMNY in the last three months, the average price target is $12 with a high estimate of $12 and a low estimate of $12. A lot of those are actually computer-generated one time when the stock is actually looking semi-decent and then they don't change them. It's not like there's somebody actually sitting there going, hmm, HMNY stock, and going over the filings and saying, this is going to be worth $12. That's why analyst stuff is, especially if you're paying for it, is not worth it. June 1st, 2018. Let's go ahead and look at June 1st, 2018. Somebody put that out June 1st, 2018. Something went terribly wrong. <laughs> they must have paid somebody at Thomson Reuters then. Yeah, uh, like Buckers is kind of saying, analyst recommendations are useless unless it's a big company. And that's pretty much the case. I mean, you see some of these recommendations come out, and they're, they're bought. They're, they're bought recommendations for the most part. Um, or, you know, there's ulterior motives behind giving such a recommendation. There's nothing here to indicate that this is a $12 stock. Uh, you have something that is diluting daily and increasing the share count, and then they're asking, hey, can we increase the share count again and then reverse split it? There's nothing there to indicate that it's going to be $12 until after the reverse split. So maybe in 12 months it will be $12, but that'll be a reverse split adjusted by 250 So now I, I'm seeing some uh, basic sense here in the comments. Cash burn seems unsustainable. I have a movie pass in theaters. Always charge full ticket price, even if it's a discount day. I think the underlying value comes from the data and targeted marketing. Doe John, I completely agree with you. That is where the money would be. Um, unfortunately, is that money being funneled towards, uh, or is that money actually coming in yet for that data? Probably over time, if they got enough subs, would work. Is this movie pass idea going to survive all of this toxic dilution and everything are they going to keep enough money into movie pass to allow it to grow the way that it needs to uh that's a different question entirely so as of right now there's not really much holding up the idea of movie pass when you have something this toxic behind it it can be a great idea all day but if you don't execute it properly if you don't put the the money into the company itself uh, to grow the brand, to go and get these deals, etc., and just kind of ride on the coattails of what the last people who owned it did, then eventually it slows down and slows down until the company shuts down. And then HMNY will ultimately either sell the assets off or just kind of let it fade into the background as they buy something else. Uh, I wouldn't recommend necessarily shorting the stock um, just because the borrow rates are so high. Uh, the, the fees are just really astronomical. I wish I would have shorted a lot sooner to get a lower fee. But uh, Probably. Would you recommend to short the stock or buy puts after the RS? I would probably buy puts if somebody's selling them. Uh, that seems like a fairly viable option. I mean, as long as there's enough volume it, that it makes sense to buy puts in that case. Uh, you're right about the subscriber base, though. 3.5 million is a lot, but when you compare it to a popular YouTube channel or Twitter, it's a joke. Never thought of it like that until now. Yeah, I mean, there is the one difference of, you know, you're getting the $8 a month per customer, but our online data is worth about 7 or $8 um, last that I checked a report, but once again, I don't have those numbers up, so don't quote me on that because somebody will get mad that I don't have those numbers. Uh, so that being said, I mean, even those Twitter pages and YouTube pages, uh, they bring enough, enough money for YouTube and Twitter uh, to justify you know, having larger counts like that. Uh, so these are relatively small counts for something like MoviePass, and there's a lot more overhead. Um, they have to work with uh, a lot more real world stuff, not just the internet, but you know, sending these cards out, one thing, um, you know, working with these actual movie theaters who have very, very large amounts of overhead and need to be able to see that these 
uh, MoviePass things are actually working in their favor as well. That's why AMC wasn't very impressed and pulled out. Um, it's just a different business model, and it's meant to try to disrupt. And unless you have a lot of cash flow coming in, it's hard to see that it's going to continue successfully. Uh, what are your thoughts on a PE takeover with the intention of raising subscription rates and implementing viewing caps to reach profitability ASAP? Uh, I mean, if it were to occur, then it could very well reach profitability at some point if it got enough of a subscriber base. Um, that being said, I mean, movie theaters are considered a niche market now. Most people want to sit at home, um, lead a more sedentary lifestyle, especially in America. So if this is something that they could get into maybe other countries that use movie theaters more so than Americans now, uh, then that could be a little bit more of a game changer. But there's probably comparative services over in other countries as well. So uh, that's something that would have to be considered. Uh, you don't pay for subscription on YouTube or Twitter. There's something called YouTube Red, number one and number two. You pay with your data. Don't ever think that any application that we use that's free is actually free. E.g. doubling subscription to $20 a month, max four views per month, lose 90% of customers, but make single digit profit per month per customer. Uh, would be a much smarter approach, um, but it wouldn't really give them a growth model to go off of. And people are more impressed by subscriber numbers than they are by uh, very mediocre growth. So, uh, Brett Nile says, if this dude's correct, then they will never bother to raise cost limit viewing. Just keep pumping on positive announcements like sub count until DK. That's pretty much what I've been trying to say since the first minute this video started. Yes, that is the intention of HMNY is to bleed this company into the ground until they can say we're done with it and move on to the next thing. That's what happened with the previous companies that HMNY has bought and that's what they will do with MoviePass. What's the point of diluting and getting all the money but turning the company into garbage and taking the risk to be arrested, giving that movie pass can be promising in the future? Because one way is very easy for them to make a lot of money and people don't typically get arrested for it. And the other way requires them to actually run a company. Which way sounds easier for them to make millions? Real question is, are you correct? Um, chart says so far that is what the intention is. If they decide to change it and turn it around, I will change my tune immediately. Uh, we would have to see some announcements that actually prove that, hey, you know, maybe they're taking a step in the right direction. But the filing today really puts the topping on the cake, and that's why we're doing this video today. That really confirms it, that they're increasing the share count that they're authorized to put out uh, to $2 billion and they have that up to 250 reverse split on the table, and they have that clause in there that says they can keep delaying the shareholder meeting until they have enough votes to approve it. Those are three of the biggest red flags you could ever get in a stock, and that's just guaranteeing you, hey, this is the, the, the next step of a toxic dilutive company. So if you guys have any other questions, feel free to shoot away. We're just basically looking at the, uh, the chat here and going based off that. Apparently, brother has had enough of Brett. I thought he was fine. He was asking some interesting questions. How likely it will be 80 cents plus without reverse split uh, after the news today? Very, very unlikely. They just pulled the I mean, that's a pretty big bombshell that they just dropped. And it's just going to continue the drop here unless they find some unicorn news to put out there 
to try to push it back up to around a dollar for another round of dilution. Um, that's all you could really hope for. But I wouldn't bet on that. And betting on that means putting money into the stock. So I think we've been going on for about an hour. Um, I think we've really pretty much covered uh, the basic topic of what I wanted to cover here, which is HMNY and what their real intentions are doing with MoviePass and how, unfortunately, we have so many uh, younger novice traders that are really sucked into this because it's another cult stock uh, that these people are just preying on, uh, these poor shareholders. Um, so that's about all we wanted to try to get across uh, from All Star Trading Team. This isn't the first time that we've seen it, and we just hate p seeing people in this situation. So figured we get a message out there, let you guys kind of think about it a little bit more. What's going on with this? Um, not just the one side of Movie Pass, but actually what HMNY is doing. So if you guys like the video, appreciate a like and a subscribe. Uh, we like to do videos like this, and we like to do weekly Q&As where we look over the technical analysis of stocks. Um, make sure you guys share this around. Show some people that you think need to hear this kind of information. Maybe they're in deep. Maybe they're a bag holder. They're holding, and you know, maybe you're one of those people that's trying to reach out to them, and maybe they need another voice to hear. And look at the actual chart and everything. See it from a different perspective to really get it. Uh, some people need to snap out of it. Sometimes they get too deep and they, they lose themselves in one aspect, the movie pass aspect, and forget about the HMNY dilutive machine behind it. So uh, we also have a little bit of a push out there, uh, a plug. So if you guys email that Gmail account there, you can get a free trial to our trading platform. Uh, alerts for day trades, swing trades, long trades. Uh, educational material, we go over OTC stocks, we have cryptocurrency options, uh, and it's a nice tight-knit community. Everybody likes to learn with each other. Uh, this is Andrew signing off. You guys enjoy the rest of your week and trade safe out there. Appreciate you guys. You all have a good night.